Hello and welcome to Electric Moments. Until recent years, fleet managers really only had to worry about two fuels, petrol and diesel. But now, of course, electricity has been added to the mix for both plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, or PHEVs, and full battery electric vehicles, or BEVs. This is a wonderful development, of course. Good for the environment, our collective health, and companies' bottom lines. But as with all changes, it throws up certain challenges such as reimbursement. How do fleets reimburse EV drivers for electricity used in the course of business? And on the flip side, how do EV drivers reimburse fleets for electricity used for private purposes? Now, we know that these questions are on fleet professionals' minds because, if we can give you a quick peek behind the curtain, reimbursement is actually the most searched-for topic on the lease plan website. And these questions are asked of their consultants and account managers on a regular basis. It's made even more complicated by the fact that there's such a range of refueling, or perhaps we should say recharging options for electric motorists. Whether it's at home charging or workplace charging, using the public network, or even, as is in the case with PHEVs, filling up with old-fashioned fossil fuels too. So I'm joined today by Matthew Walters from Lease Plan to explain everything you need to know about reimbursement and EVs. So welcome to another episode of Electric Moments. Hello, Matt. Uh, you know, let's start with the absolute basics. What are advisory fuel rates? So AFRs are the HMRC approved fuel reimbursement for company cars. So you use them whether you're a fleet manager and you're reimbursing a driver for uh, his business mileage or her business mileage, or you're a driver and you're repaying your employer for the fuel that you've used. So what are the current AFRs then? There are, th there are three rates for uh, conventional petrol company cars based on engine size. So up to 1400 cc, the AFR or the approved fuel rate is 13 pence a mile. From 1,401 to 2,000 cc is 15 pence a mile, and for 2,000 cc it's 22 pence a mile. As for conventional diesel company cars, again there are three rates, but the engine size numbers are slightly different. So if it's up to 1,600 cc, the AFR is 11 pence a mile. From 1,601 to 2,000 cc, it's 13 pence a mile, and for over 2,000 cc, it's 16 pence a mile. This is probably a good time to point out that there's also a special flat rate for drivers using their privately owned vehicles for business use, which is 45 pence a mile for the first 10,000 miles, and then 25 pence a mile for every mile thereafter. Okay then, but what about uh, electric vehicles? One of the reasons it's useful to go through those numbers is those rates also apply to hybrids and plug-in hybrids or, or FEVs, as we like to call them. So. For the purposes of reimbursement, hybrids are treated exactly the same as their petrol and diesel counterparts, but not so with electric. So for electric vehicles or battery electric vehicles, um, they have a flat rate of reimbursement of five pence a mile. But with the cost of electricity at the moment, 5p actually sounds quite low. I mean, is that, is, it is low, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it is. So, um, you know, electricity on the rise and, and energy is on the rise uh, as just as fuel is on the rise, um, but obviously, Electric vehicles are still a lot cheaper um, um, to run than their fossil fuel counterparts. Um, but this is where we need to go into a bit more detail, right? So um, the effective cost of any electricity will actually depend on numerous factors, such as the battery efficiency, the size of the battery, the driver's behavior, the method of charging, and, and, and so on and so on. So this means that even for the same car, the cost of a mile's worth of electricity can vary enormously. Um, and even go well beyond the government recommended reimbursement rate. In fact, we've done the maths using a 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf Accenter. Um, so if you, the driver, charge that Nissan on a home energy rate, then the electricity probably is costing somewhere between five pence and 10 pence a mile. So five pence uh, before, before the energy cap, and 10, somewhere between five and 10 afterwards, depending on your driving styles. But if you hook it up to a rapid public charge point, then that cost could rise to as much as 23 pence a mile. So this is why HMRC um, allows businesses to reflect actual cost reimbursement over and above the average energy rates or the AERs that apply to battery electric vehicles. 
What sort of things should businesses consider then when determining reimbursement rates for, for electric vehicles? So one of the first thing is the driver's charging situation because not everybody can have a home charge point, right down to whether they have off-street parking or on-street parking. Um, and after all, on-street charging solutions vary tremendously as well, such as charge points built into lampposts. Well, they tend not to be as cheap as domestic energy tariffs. And, and so if you only have access to public charging points, what, what's the arrangement then? So again, there are significant price differences um, between the different networks, um, and it tends to vary between the slower to the, to the faster chargers um, attracting the highest costs and for the fastest charging speeds. And in this case, limiting reimbursements rate can help steer drivers towards cheaper networks or encourage the use of membership options where they're available. And if you have hybrids in your fleet, what's, what's the arrangements there? As we said before, there are no specific rates for hybrids or, or, or plug-in hybrids. So they tend to be reimbursed at the same rate as conventional petrol and, and diesel vehicles. But businesses can still be smart here. So setting a lower, lower mileage rate, for example, um, can encourage drivers to keep on charging their plug-in hybrid electric vehicle rather than just relying on the liquid fossil fuel, which is actually what you want them to be doing. Um, not only would that reduce running costs, it would reduce, of course, the, the CO2 emissions for the fleet. So are there any tax considerations then that our viewers should be aware of? In a word, it depends. Right. So, And it, in this case, it depends entirely on how the vehicle is being used. So if the EV or the electric vehicle in question is being used solely for business use, then all of the energy, all of the charging can be reclaimed through expenses and there's no benefit in kind attributed to it. Benefit in kind, the, the, the lovely thing that we've talked about before. Um, but if it's a company car that's mixed use, so is available for private and business use, then only the business use um, of the vehicle can be claimed without incurring benefit in kind. So it works slightly differently between the two. So once again, elect any electricity used for business use can, doesn't count as a benefit in kind. Drivers simply pay up front for their charging and reclaim it through their expenses. Um, or the employer pays for everything and then has to apportion the private mileage or the, the private element of the electricity to avoid benefit in kind. So it's quite complicated. However, if the employer goes further and then cost, covers the cost of all private mileage, then that mileage is classed as a benefit in kind and, and benefit in kind and national insurance contributions apply. In any case, if you, if you are uncertain whether you owe benefit in kind, national insurance contributions, there are some really useful tools online at .gov.uk and they'll help you to check. So we'll put the link to that in, in the description. Absolutely. Um, and if you, if you are stuck, you can... Um, check if you if you want to check if you need to pay tax um, then you can find that tool easily enough simply by searching for reimbursement or employees electric car on the government website so before we expand on this further let's talk to someone who's already transitioned their fleet to electric so our fleet is consists of 25 vehicles but they are very diverse ranging from passenger cars to even things like electric tractors and most of our charging is actually done at our bases because they are return to base vehicles. Basically what we've had to do is a lot of our staff have had to have corporate cards because they are all authority vehicles so we've ended up having to give them contactless cards which is not the ideal solution because they're just general purpose cards. We're lucky in many respects that a lot of our work is within the 520 square miles so by building our own infrastructure we can manage that by the fact that we control where we buy electricity from and then on longer runs we do have to just because people are new to evs we kind of have to suggest the easiest charge point rather than necessarily the cheapest one because we can't have staff messing around with apps and things like that it's it's got to be simple otherwise it'll put people off one of the biggest things is actually size your charging infrastructure to match your fleet because the easiest way to manage is that if you can return your vehicles to base you can control your costs much more easily than just using public charging. Ideally if we could have a fuel card equivalent like we used to have with petrol vehicles but just for an electric car that would be perfect. So private mileage, business mileage, off-street charging, on-street charging, public charging. I mean, it, it does sound like it could get quite confusing quite quickly. It can, and, and, it, and it does in certain circumstances. Um, and the key here is to keep good 
mileage records and good charging records. So keep tabs of the business mileage trips that you're doing and, and any charging expenses that you're incurring to ensure that you can be in reverse correctly. Um, so and so long as you maintain those records, distinguishing between business and private mileage, you're able to keep tabs on the costs. So does that mean like loads of spreadsheets or is there an easier way of, of keeping tabs? Entirely up to you. So you, you can do it by spreadsheet, um, but there are definitely more straightforward options nowadays. Um, uh, there's much more automation. There's apps available to you um, that are easily downloadable from the iStore that will even track the motion of the car. So it minimizes the amount of data entry that you need to use. Um, and the other advantages are it's a single account for all your charging, whether it's home or at work, um, and systems that automatically invoice employers for business mileage purposes and expenses. But it really is down to the individual customer as to what works for them. So we're here at Leasepan, of course, to, to help fleets and, and employers navigate those, uh, those areas. And I suppose that goes for any part of the reimbursement story. I mean, lease plan is there to, to help advise, support, you know, implement these, these systems. Absolutely. So whether you as an operator want to go to insights.leaseplan.co.uk, where you'll find lots of useful tips and links, that's fine. Best thing to do, get in touch with your account manager or get in touch with our consultancy services team. Well, thanks, Matt. It's, it's been really good chatting to you about these, these topics that really can be quite tricky to grasp. I mean, it's great to know that Lease Plan are there to offer advice and guidance to anyone who's unsure. Well, that's all for this episode of Electric Moments, but do check out the other fascinating episodes in this series and the first. And as always, if you have been, thanks for watching. <laughs>